All right, so now it's time to do some cool post-production effects. And when I'm doing this, I actually like to pull up my image in order to have a good reference. And I'm gonna put it aside. That will help me. If you have two screens, it's much better. You can put it on one screen. Just make sure you're both screen calibrated, otherwise you're gonna have different colorization. So I'm gonna put it like here and this one aside. And I'm going to go to my post-production processing here and start working my image out. So first thing is what I'm going to do, I'm going to change my HDRI map and then I'm gonna do some color correction to it to the entire scene of course so in order to do that just double click and select here your HDRI map I'm going to use this one and you can see here this image been loaded here so if you don't see it you can click re-import and it will re-import your HDRI back to your scene Okay, when you've done this, just click close and start working on your scene. So first, let's do some temperature, let's do some warm color to it. So by default, it's 65, uh, 6500 Kelvin, that's uh, bluish day illumination. And I'm going to make it a little bit more warmer. All right, so in global, I'm going to do contrast, gamma, and gain. All the rest I'm going to leave as it is. And you can see here we have shadows, midtones, and highlights. This is the exact color balance that we can do, same as Photoshop. So here I'm going to increase that a little bit. Gamma, I'm going to reduce that just a smidge. And gain, I'm going to increase that somewhere here. Contrast, I want to give it a little color here, something like this. And now we can go ahead and check the other parameters. So those I actually like to leave to the end. After I'm done adding all the effects, I can do my final color correction because so far I'm pretty satisfied with this uh, with this look. So let's go and see the tone mapper. First one is a slope. Let's try this. the shoulder a little bit to give more contrast to my lights somewhere here and black clip scale just a smidge contrast to it okay mobile tone mapper I'm not gonna do it I'm going to move straight to the lens effect, so chromatic aberration, it's the channel shift, let's give it a slight one, when editing, let's give a little bit nicer dark corners, And go ahead and add some bloom and intensity here. Somewhere here. Method standard. I 
And let's go check out this advanced options. Size scale. That one here. And this one. Gonna be. So you can see we're getting nice soft glowy bloom around this area here. Maybe our light intensity is a little bit too much here. Okay, let's scroll down. Dirt mask. Not gonna use that. Outer exposure. Let's give a little bit more. Yeah, that would look much, much nicer. Now let's do some lens flares a bit stronger oops and here can give it a tent and we can give some Okay, effect. And threshold. Something like this. Let's reduce the intensity because it's obviously too much. So somewhere here would be fine. Cool lens flare. Okay. Tints we can do. I'm not gonna do this. Depth of field. If we have some camera moves, that would be awesome. But I'm gonna leave it as is now. And now let's scroll down. We get to do some ambient occlusion. Let's do the intensity. And for ambient occlusion, we have to go towards our walls and see how the shadows gather at the corner. So I'm gonna make it really thin, nice and fine. And in the advanced options, I'm going to activate all of those guys. And play around with it till I get something that works very naturally. Fade, how oh, I want to fade those. Power, how strong it is. Bias, how much it spreads. Quality, it's increased to 100 and meet and me blend somewhere here It'd work fine. All right, let's move on forward in direct illumination. Let's move 
to the side a little bit so we'll really be able to see the entire space. So a bit more lighter. Motion blur if we do have uh, any any camera moves or any object that's moving this is good. Light propagation. Let's see what this one does. Don't see any much change. I actually never played with those settings. But I guess they need to be tweaked. And uh, post process volume settings. That also doesn't do much. Except contrast the blend between so let's leave it somewhere here brush settings actors all of that stuff I'm not gonna use but generally speaking this is my setup to match more or less the colorization and the mood of my rendered reference